Well, I suppose we talk about Raw here very quickly. No, oh, but that was Sami Zayn coming out, and they did the big deal where he soaked in the cheers. And then he explained to everybody that, you know, the story is not over. But it's no longer about me. Now, I would like to call out Kevin Owens. And he calls Kevin Owens down to the ring, and he says, you know, Kevin... I tried to beat Roman Reigns. I couldn't do it. You tried to beat Roman Reigns. You also couldn't do it. But maybe if the two of us teamed up together, we could take out this bloodline. Kevin Owens says, brother, I don't need an apology. I don't need gratitude. Dude, I got killed at the, at the, at the Royal Rumble, and you were standing there, and you just let it happen. And, you know, I didn't go out there at Elimination Chamber. I didn't go out there to save you. I did that for me. I did that for my family. And in fact, I also did that for your family because I didn't want your family sitting there watching while you got killed by these guys. He says, if you want help against the bloodline, I got a great idea. Why don't you just ask your buddy Jay? And he walks out and people boo. Poor Sammy Zane so sad. And as he goes to leave, he gets jumped by... Of all people, Baron Corbin. They have a nine-minute Baron corbin Sami Zayn match where Baron Corbin, you know, he beat the hell out of him, but he also, like, grabbed his chin and held him there on the mat for a while. And finally, Sami makes a, a somewhat of a comeback, gets hit with a, a deep six. Corbin runs to the corner, and then Sami zooms in, hit, hits him with the kick, pins him. Sami gets his win and we wait to find out if Kevin Owens will team up with Sami Zayn and what's going on with his old Jay Uso situation here. I think technically in that entire segment, there were two picture in pictures. Yeah, they were. And they put Sami in both of them to try to uh, keep the audience. Rhea and Dominic <laughs> did a promo. What's so funny? No. They did. Rhea and Dominic did a promo, and uh, they're going to be going to SmackDown on Friday because there's a face-to-face, -face, and then Dom wants to see his deadbeat dad. We had Theory doing a promo, hyping up a match with John Cena, which is going to be taking place at WrestleMania. Then, after all those weeks of, and I quote Dave Meltzer here, build, we finally got... Ollie and Ziggler. <laughs> oh, the build they've had for this match. Let's beat both guys and make them look like total geeks. Then we'll have them wrestle each other, and you're, you're going to care, fans. Well, you know what? They didn't care. They went two minutes. Ollie cradled him, pinned him, celebrated like he'd had the biggest win of his career. He's a heel because, you know, why wouldn't Ollie be a heel? And uh, that was the segment there. It was not... Uh, I didn't light my world on fire. Don't know about the rest of you guys. Miz and Maurice do a promo. It's her nine-year anniversary. Maurice has given him a mystery envelope, which he knows the contents of. It's the best gift he's ever gotten. He will reveal it next week on Miz TV. I think she's pregnant. What do you think? What else would it be? What else could be such a great gift inside an envelope? The greatest gift he's ever uh, received, huh? Well, it, it's got to be something that he can lose because that's what he does. So whatever this honor is, has got to blow up in his face somehow. So where's Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis? It's going to blow up in his face when he finds out it's actually twins. Or it's Dexter Loomis's. No, come on. They're not doing that. Cody Rhodes comes down to the ring, and he's immediately interrupted by Paul Heyman, who's backstage in a neck brace with both belts. And he does this long promo, which, man, the fans were not into just sitting there waiting for this promo. He says, you know, you can't beat Roman Reigns. Think about what would happen if you won the title, he said. You'd be on the road like 320 days a year, just like your father. You'd never see your wife. You'd never see your child. Are you ready for that? And he says, you know, I'm not going to sit here and do a cheap heat line like on a cold winter's night, Roman Reigns would be there to keep your wife warm. He says, I'd never say something like that because, you know, Roman Reigns, he says, is a happily married man. But I'm not. 
And so Cody's like, this disgusting man. He goes, Roman, don't ever send this guy again. He goes, we're going to be face-to-face here very soon. And when we are, I'm going to tell you to your face the same thing I'm going to say here. I am going to beat you for the undisputed title at WrestleMania. It's not a super heat segment, by the way. This was not a super heat segment. Oh, well, it depends. We had asked. Depends on how heated you get thinking about the thought of Brandy Rhodes back in the mix with Paul Heyman in the lead up to WrestleMania. She's going to be there, dude. It's inevitable. You know what needs to happen? You, need to, you know who needs to get their revenge on Paul Heyman for this promo? Who? It's not Brandy. Dustin? It's their, it's their dog. Oh. Pharaoh. Yeah. Pharaoh needs to go after old Paul Heyman and get revenge for the whole family. We had Asuka beating Nikki Cross, which was a good match because you know what? This Asuka, let me tell you something. She's great. Although Nikki was was not in her, uh, you know, this was not the best work I've seen out of Nikki Cross. But Asuka looked great, submitted her. Then Bianca hit the ring. They had a stare down. And then Asuka starts, we, we're back to the goo. Ugh. But this is on purpose goo by Asuka. Blue goo. They used to be uh, a like sponsor. Spit, maybe she's got Invisalign and she just involuntarily drools here and there. She, look, That's the worst part of this something. thing. Those are some white look. I it, What is it with WWE? Everybody has the whitest of white ass teeth now. I noticed. I don't know if that well, was Roman Reigns. Uh, everybody has the whitest of white teeth. Yeah, Roman's got beautiful Rick teeth. There. Go with that mm. beautiful hair. We had Seth Rollins versus The Miz, which inexplicably lasted 11 minutes. And uh, Miz ended up uh, getting curb stomped twice. And uh, three times, actually. And after the third one, the referee stopped the match. And, uh, yeah, Miz Miz now goes into Miz TV next week with a a massive head injury to open up this envelope, I guess. (laughs) Oh, God, maybe that's going to be... That's what happened. He lost the envelope and he can't find where it is and somebody else finds the envelope. I hope not. Oh, no. I hope not. (laughs) We had Ding Dong Hello with Bailey, and she's there with Dakota and Io. They talk about beating everybody, including Becky. So Becky interrupts. And she comes out of the ring. She wants the tag titles. They go, you don't have a partner. You don't have any friends. And so who should come down to the ring but Lita? And they issue the challenge. And next week on this show, it is Dakota and Io versus Becky Lynch and Lita for the women's tag team titles. They got six weeks, so there's a lot they have to do because obviously we got Ronda and Shayna, who they're building up to a tag team title match. We also have, you know, Trish was backstage, and a lot of people have suspected maybe, you know, all of all of uh, Damage Control versus Lita, Becky, and Trish. You could do that at Mania. So we'll see where they go That's in the next six weeks to set all of this up. Her province... Why did they not use Trish Stratus? They couldn't come up with anything, and Trish Stratus said, I'm out of here. You know, there's a lot of not being able to come up with anything in in Canada, I've noticed, of late. Bronson Reed beat Chad Gable in three minutes. Every now and then I look at, like, the times of these matches, (laughs) and it's like, this match went three minutes because they had a really fun match, and not only did they do, like, a lot of cool stuff in this match, but you also had Maxine out there and Otis, and you did a whole thing between those two, and somehow they managed to fit all of this into three minutes and 15 seconds, which I don't know how they did it, but they did, and I liked it. You're way overrating it, but I'll say this. Chad Gable giving Bronson Reed that bridging back suplex was beautiful. Yeah, they teased it. They teased it early, and then he... Actually, they teased, yeah, Gable hitting it on him, and then he finally did it. It was awesome. So then we had uh, Elias in the ring, and he wants to know who wants to walk with Elias. None of the fans do. And then out comes Lashley. He spears him. He, He taps him out with the hurt lock, and then he does a promo about how nobody can break the hurt lock. Not Brock Lesnar, not Bray Wyatt. Oh, Bobby. And so it looks like uh, it looks like they're doing Lashley and Bray Wyatt. Bro, you know, <laughs> I, I, I come up with ideas all the time. I don't get mad when they do different things, except in this case. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley versus Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy is, dude, that's a WrestleMania main event any year. Any year. I don't, I'm not into this magic, 
hullabaloo and all this other crap. But that dude is a that is a dream match. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley against Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy. And they have taken that away from me for Brock Lesnar versus Omos and Bobby Lashley versus Bray Wyatt. Infuriated. And then Austin Theory beat Edge in the main event after Finn Balor interfered to set up whatever they're doing with Finn Balor and Edge at WrestleMania. By the end of this, I was convinced Iron Mike Sharp was the best wrestler who ever lived. He's low-key at first. Like, ah, bah, bah, bah. But he keeps going. He claps. I'm tall. I'm giant Mike Sharp. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.